Bioshock is a project that toes the line between being a video game and a work of art. Hey, Jarek here. And of course I have played Bioshock before, but I put off making a video of the Bioshock series for a long time. It's almost daunting. How do you cover a game that's this important? Hell, Bioshock even came out in one of the most stacked years in video game history. 2007, Call of Duty 4 came out, revolutionizing multiplayer for better or worse. Halo was the biggest it had ever been in the franchise. People love to look at Halo and Call of Duty as competitors like one killed the other that year, but both were just massive and doing very well. Crisis killed your computer the same year. The best collection of video games we have ever seen with the Orange Box released. We had such a good mix of single player and multiplayer offerings that year, and every package felt complete. Yet somehow out of all of that, Bioshock remains one of the most memorable experiences I had. What is it about this world that makes me want to come back? Unfortunately, before we even discuss Bioshock, we have to talk about its bad releases and bad PC ports. I'm, I'm too big to fit in the chair. And this chair. And the bed. I found some nice fire though. My god is trying to play Bioshock annoying sometimes. While 2007 was a fantastic year for video games, it was solidly in the 360 PS3 era. Games that released during that time typically had horrible PC ports and were limited by what consoles they were on. Bioshock on 360 and PS3 doesn't run at a very high resolution and struggles to keep its frame rate. The Bioshock we ended up getting on PC was a horrible PC port as was most games at the time. And since my favorite era when it comes to shooters is the 2000s, this is where the meme, Jarek the FOV Dragon, came from. So many of these games force you to do so many annoying workarounds just to get basic functions that were standard 10 years prior. Bioshock's PC port is worse than most. Look at the PC gaming wiki. There are so many little fixes you have to do to make this game not annoying to play. Let's get the meme out of the way. Yes, there's no FOV slider and the default FOV is absolutely horrendous. You need to download a third party program just to change your FOV. The next really big problem you run into is that mouse aiming feels awful. Mouse acceleration is turned on by default with no way to turn it off in game and mouse sensitivity is very sensitive. Now you can turn mouse sensitivity down to one and that's what I did and it felt okay, I could kind of aim, still didn't feel great, but at least it was playable. And then you pause the game or go into a hacking mini game and you can't click anything. The mouse jitters, the mouse gets stuck, turning it all the way down is not the solution. What I ended up doing was turning the mouse sensitivity down to two and then lowering my DPI so that I can actually aim. Oh, and this was after doing the workaround to remove mouse acceleration. The next issue you'll run into is that physics is locked to 30 FPS, making everything look really jittery. Thankfully, you can unlock it and make it look much better, and this doesn't cause any issues. Now, there's a ton of other issues and a lot of different things you can tweak with. You get my point, this is a really bad PC release. And if you're about to say, but Jarek, wasn't there a remastered version? Why don't you just go play that? Well, it's even worse. This remastered version is still based on the PC port, so it already wasn't good to begin with but it has tons of problems on top of the original problems. In fact, I made a video of this remastered version long before this channel blew up. I didn't take this channel seriously back in 2016 when I posted this. It was just a channel to dump footage. I had a good game in Call of Duty, posted here, show it to my friends. That's all it was. I was relatively unknown in the gaming space. But I made a video talking about how broken the remastered version was. Here's Jarek from seven or eight years ago. First off, let's go ahead and go into the options. That's your graphical options. This is the only options you have. You have no choice for FOV. You have to do a workaround to make the FOV work properly. Uh, even then, it's it's kind of buggy because aiming down the sights resets your FOV. So you need to rebind the FOV fix to a key and push that key after you aim every time to get your the FOV you actually want back. The same mouse issues you had in the original game are still prevalent. My mouse is doing some janky stuff. I am moving my mouse in circles right now, but whatever, you got it fixed. It's good, right? No, it's not good, right? Because this game crashes all the fucking time. I've also noticed that there is a specific enemy that if I attack the specific enemy, it crashes the game. Whoa, there's the mouse, uh, mouse sensitivity I was talking about. Let's see, I believe it's her. 
Yep, there we go. Game has crashed on me. This video got 67k views on a channel that didn't really get views, and I still get comments on that video. And if you're about to say, just play it on console, nope, those comments I get are from every platform. PS4, Xbox One, PC, doesn't matter what they're playing on, it's broken on all platforms. It could be something as simple as the audio is broken, the textures won't load, for some reason I couldn't respawn here, the AI are completely broken, or one that's really common that I get all the time, it deleted my save. Yeah, that's something that can happen, might happen, I don't want to risk that. So I just played with the default version and just dealt with it. Thankfully, you can at least fix all the issues on PC. It would be nice if it just worked out of the box, but at least I'm not stuck with them. If you want to play this on PC and want to fix all of these issues, go look at PC Gaming Wiki. It's a fantastic resource for fixing little tiny annoying quality of life things. All right, now that I've got the Jarek ramble out, let's actually talk about Bioshock. Even back in 2007 on launch, Bioshock wasn't the most technologically advanced game. But when I was streaming just a few days ago in 2023, so many people popped into my chat and said, damn, this game still looks amazing. This is a game that is carried entirely by its art style, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Bioshock is a game that leaves an impression within the first 10 minutes. I rejected those answers. Instead, I chose something different. I chose the impossible. I chose rapture. artist would not fear the censor, where the scientist would not be bound by petty morality, where the great would not be constrained by the small, and with the sweat of your brow, rapture can become your city as well. And even better, after this reveal, this game isn't on rails. The player has full control to explore every nook and cranny, and every nook and cranny has so much detail to keep you immersed in this world. If visuals aren't enough, then the audio is certainly going to do it. This is one of the biggest reasons why I don't recommend you to play it remastered. Audio got a downgrade, and audio is incredibly important to Bioshock. What's even more crucial is why any of this exists. Andrew Ryan is a man who hates government overreach, so he founded his own city, and now it's in ruin. If that sounds political, it is. Bioshock has never exactly shied away from that. But the fact that it's tied to multiple different people makes it far more important than just maybe a political message. It makes it a character in the same vein that Silent Hill is a character in Silent Hill's games. This city stands for so much success and failure of these characters. And if you don't think Bioshock is political, I don't know what to tell you. Within the first five minutes, it talks about government overreach and the Pope. Is a man not entitled to the sweat of his brow? No, says the man in Washington, it belongs to the poor. No, says the man in the Vatican, it belongs to God. No, says the man in Moscow, it belongs to everyone. In fact, there's a lot of religious imagery in this game, including drug addicts singing religious songs. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. This is something I think most studios would have shied away from, especially today, but I'm glad Bioshock did not. With all that said, I'm not going to break down the political, moral message of Bioshock. You don't need a dragon man on the internet making video essays about a 15-year-old game telling you what you should and shouldn't think politically. I'm fine being open about my stances, but that's not what this channel is about. If I make you forget about everyday bullshit life for 10 to 20 minutes, I consider that a good video. Anyway, let's actually talk about this story. The game starts with you crashing a plane and getting that awesome introduction to Rapture. From here, it is very quickly established that Rapture is falling apart and that Andrew Ryan has lost his shit. The only voice of reason you get is through a man named Atlas. He tells you the in and outs of this city and how to survive. He himself is just trying to save his family and get out. Now the format of Bioshock kind of means not a whole lot happens throughout the middle section of the game. Well, at the same time, a lot happens. Let me explain. You walk into a new section of Rapture and immediately run into a roadblock. Your goal is to clear up this roadblock. 
For example, I'll need to find the telekinesis ability so I can throw a bomb at the sign, blow it up, and get it out of the way. This means I have to wander all throughout this area to find it. Now, this is somewhat of a lie, because even though you can explore this entire area, it's more or less a linear path to get to where you need to go. With that said, you have the illusion of choice, and I'm very thankful for that. And there are a lot of things you will miss if you don't explore. Anyway, you'll come across new NPCs and new characters that will tell a contained story within that section of Rapture. What can I do with this one, Aphrodite? She won't stay still! I want to make them beautiful, but they always turn out wrong! That was too fat! This was too tall! This was too symmetrical! And now... What's this goddess? An intruder? He's ugly! 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 This is very similar to how a lot of early 2000s games did it, and Half-Life is the most prominent one. You think I would make a video and not reference Half-Life at least once? My point here is that throughout these chapters, it doesn't usually advance the story all that much. It tells new stories that are very short except for the occasional cutscene involving Andrew Ryan and Atlas. Actually, in that sense, it's pretty similar to Far Cry. Unless you see Voss in Far Cry 3, it's not really advancing the story, and that's fine. But now I have to talk about what everyone has probably clicked on the story portion for, that twist at the end. If you don't want spoilers, I put a chapter down there so you can skip forward. If you're on mobile and can't see chapters or something like that, uh, here's a timestamp. Would you kindly? Those are the words stuck in so many people's heads after beating Bioshock 1. I have conflicting feelings. For the most part, it's an extremely good twist. The entirety of this game involves you and Atlas trying to get out of Rapture, and Andrew Ryan trying to kill you at every moment. It feels like Andrew Ryan is the main antagonist, the one pulling the strings, the one that has clearly lost their mind. He's gone drunk with power, acting like a dictator. And then comes that twist. You never had a family on the surface. You weren't part of a horrible accident where the plane crashed. You were a genetic experiment from Rapture. They had to listen to someone saying, would you kindly? Those words are a trigger that Atlas was using against you. Because Atlas isn't Atlas, he's Fontaine. Fontaine being another person trying to take control over Rapture. This takes all that information you got throughout the entire course of the game and chucks it out the window. Except it doesn't. It doesn't at all. Because if you were listening and paying attention, all of that information was there, you just didn't notice. That's what makes this twist so good. If you go back and play through the game a second time, you'll notice this happening in real time. After all, the first time you play this game, you see what's going on in Rapture around you and you probably just take Atlas's word. Someone that's more skeptical may think Atlas is probably also going to be the villain, but won't be able to tell how the twist is coming. And that's kind of one of my complaints. I can suspend my disbelief for all of this, but I can't suspend my disbelief for the would you kindly thing. Someone has complete control over you because they say three words? That's just a little bit too much. It always seemed a bit silly to me. It's great storytelling with a great buildup, but it just pulls me out of the moment. On top of that, the fact that Andrew Ryan basically just commands you to kill him after you've finally been cornered and he finally has the leg up and he's been trying to kill you the entire game, this bothers me too. There's a lot of videos trying to figure out why Andrew Ryan wanted you to kill him or why he demanded you to kill him, but it always feels like armchair psychology and doesn't make much sense to me. Still, the story is written well enough to stick in my brain so many years later. There's very few games that occupy that space, at least when it comes to story. As for the actual endings, I don't actually have any complaints. Very rarely does a game make a Disney-style ending where everyone lives happily ever after and I'm not annoyed by it. There are two endings, it depends on if you save the little girls or not. If you save all of the little girls or harvest only one, then you effectively adopt all of them, live a long life, and everybody's happy. And what did you do instead? What I've come to expect of you. You saved them. You gave them the one thing that was stolen from them. A chance. After what you just went through and everything you did, this lines up with the story, makes total sense, and I'm fine with that ending. It feels fulfilling. If you harvested all the little girls, you were evil, take over a submarine, and you now have nukes. Your father was terrified that the world would try to steal the secrets of his city. For you now have stolen the terrible secrets of the world.
This ending's over the top, but I'm also fine with that. It works out perfectly. Really, my main takeaway story-wise, going back to a game like Bioshock, is that I miss linear single-player campaigns, or even co-op campaigns. I miss it with the focus of a game was just atmosphere, exploration, and telling a story. Because there are a lot of people that say Bioshock is overrated. They say it didn't age well. They say it's not very good and people need to stop praising it so much. And their complaints are usually the combat. And I can see that, but that's definitely an exaggeration. Don't get me wrong, this combat is very stiff, but unplayable, no. The best example are the guns. These guns feel really weird. You can aim down sights in this game, and I still don't know why. The guns don't seem to get any more accurate, the iron sights don't seem to be very pretty, and you're usually up close to the enemies anyway. The guns themselves don't sound particularly strong, nor do they feel that impactful. Two exceptions. The first one is if it's an explosive, because yes, it's an explosive. That really doesn't have anything to do with that weapon's animations or anything, but things are blowing up and that feels good. The second exception is the shotgun. This thing's recoil animation is so exaggerated, the pumping animation is so laborious, and it sounds like a cannon. No matter if you're doing damage or not, this thing feels good to shoot. Even better, you can find upgrade stations. They're hidden pretty well and really easy to miss, and the game never explains this to you, but you can find them. And when you upgrade your guns, they add these shiny doodads on them and they look really good. But really, guns aren't what the combat is about in this game. It's the plasmids. Plasmids are a big reason why Rapture fell apart to begin with. Everyone has a little bit of a drug problem. Including you, apparently, because the first needle you see, you just shove it into your arm without question. No one told you to do that, you just did it! Anyway, the cat's out of the bag now, you got superpowers. As long as you have enough Atom to keep using them. And Atom is what everyone wants in Rapture. It's also extremely important that you never run out of Atom. If you do, combat becomes a lot harder. So what is Atom? Well, basically it's mana. It's what allows you to use your powers. The first one you get is arguably the most useful, and it's definitely the one you'll keep till the end of the game. That is electricity. The ability to basically stun lock someone with electricity and then wail on them with a wrench will forever be useful. But of course you get other abilities like fire. And this is largely used to set up barrels and oil on the ground. There's a lot of interactions in the environment with powers you end up getting. But basic plasmids don't really stand out. The ones you probably remember are plasmids like the ability to launch bees at people. Yeah, plasmids open up a lot of possibilities, and they are a lot of fun. They're the main appeal to the combat system, not the guns. And of course, you get a bunch of passive buffs on the other side. I won't talk about all of these, there's just too much to talk about. But the one I will mention is the ability to go invisible if you don't move. Don't fight the inevitable. Actually, no one more. There's a whole branch that makes hacking easier, and you'll want some of these because you're gonna do a lot of hacking in this game. Now, I didn't mind this hacking minigame at first, but holy shit, do you have to do it a lot. You'll get very tired of this by the end of the game. You'll get tired of this by the end of the second hour. It's not difficult, it's just time consuming. It's probably more annoying on console when you have to do this with a controller compared to just clicking with a mouse, but still, I ended up not really wanting to do it after a while. There's also an element of RNG, and you can find something that is quite literally unhackable. What? What? Look at that! <laughs> I literally can't hack it. What is this nonsense? It's just so useful to you, though. You get so much out of hacking that you kind of have to. So, yeah. Hacking was a complaint back then, it's still a complaint now. In fact, there's some mechanics in Bioshock that are just out of place and I don't really see the need for them being there. They're half-baked sometimes. There's a crafting mechanic that I'm convinced 90% of people never used except for the one time you had to in the story. There's another mechanic where you get a camera and then you can take pictures of enemies. This will give you buffs, plasmids, things that are genuinely useful. The problem is, you need to stop what you're doing mid-combat 
to take pictures of enemies. This ruins the flow. It's incredibly annoying. So I imagine a lot of people just didn't use it. So is the combat bad? Well, no, I wouldn't say it's great, but I wouldn't say it's bad. Plasmids definitely carry it and so do the enemies. Being immersed in this dark atmospheric city and having these crazy people all screaming about Adam and random religious things all trying to murder you, it's just an experience. You're not playing this really for the combat and the combat is good enough, especially when the big daddies come around. These are enemies you don't wanna mess with and they allow me to form sentences like, local rapture man pounded and drilled by big daddy. Seriously though, these enemies have such a unique dynamic to them. They will defend these little sisters, and little sisters carry Adam. You want Adam, that is your currency to get more plasmids. It is imperative that you get Adam to make the game not impossibly difficult later on. If you do get Adam, the game isn't so hard, in fact it's pretty easy. You have two ways of getting Adam and both of those ways involve killing the big daddy. What makes this particularly good is that the enemies are just there to protect these little girls. If you don't attack them, they're not hostile. So you can plan your attack, or you can try to make enemies attack them and just have the big daddy kill them instead. Or you can accidentally hit them, and now he's trying to kill you and it doesn't even have a little girl yet, so it's just pointless, damn it. Basically, it's a mini boss so you can pick and choose when you wanna fight, and that is a really cool idea. They're also a mini boss that reminds me how fun mid-2000s ragdoll was. <laughs> Once you kill the big daddy, you can choose to either harvest or save these little girls. Harvesting them will give you Adam right away, Saving them will give you a bigger reward later, so why would I ever harvest them? Yeah, this is supposed to be a moral choice thing, be selfish and get Adam right now, or save them for later and be the good guy, except for you get more for doing that, so there's not much of a moral choice, you just do what's best for you anyway. Yeah, that dilemma didn't really work out in the long run, but the first time you played this game, you probably harvested a few, so you didn't get the good ending. So that's Bioshock Infinite. And going into this game, I really had one question. Did it stand the test of time? Did it age well? And for the most part, yes, extremely well, especially because we don't really get experiences like this anymore, at least not much. Now, there are parts of the game that didn't age particularly well. The combat does feel pretty stiff, and to be honest, it felt stiff even on launch, and that's only getting worse over time. I just don't think that it's so bad that it's unplayable and a terrible game, as I've heard numerous people say. If you think I'm pointing this at you specifically, I'm not. This isn't even referencing anyone specific. It's a common complaint I've heard. But if you go into Bioshock with the idea of wanting to explore, wanting to figure out what goes on in this story, just wanting to get the experience, then you're gonna have one hell of a time. <laughs>